house of grace, living in his favor. Our sweet testimony. Jesus, the greatest lover of all. Jesus, the beauty of our spirits. Jesus, our redemption song. Jesus, the joy in our hearts. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to have you in our midst. We are honored to have you here. Take your seat, cross your legs, and do your thing. Speak to our hearts. Heal every broken heart. Heal every pain. Take away every burden. It's what you know to do. You do it so well. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Yes. Can you help me greet five people? Just five with a smile. Just five. Okay, make it ten. Ten. Let me say, you are going to leave your seat now. Extend the warm love of Christ. Say, it's good to see you. You look good. I like your hair. I like your eyebrow. You are sowing a seed for your future partner. You don't know. <laughs> and have your seats. Amen. I'd like to sing you a song I wrote last year, September. A simple hymn, very simple hymn. Um, so the first song I wrote after I had news of my dad's passing. So it will bless you. Lovely song. All I see is you All I know is you The very air I breathe The very life I know High in the skies above Deep beneath the earth Your presence never leaves me All I see is
I hear God saying to us this morning, you run around because you don't know me. You wander and you look for the wrong places. You go to the wrong place because you don't know me. If you knew me, you would know that I was with, with you all the while. That I was standing by you all the while. If only you can learn to call me. Call my name. Call my name in faith. No matter how small you think your faith is, I will be there, says the Lord. I will be there to hear you, to hold you, to comfort you, to strengthen you, says the Spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. God's presence is so strong this morning. I pray I'll be able to preach. <laughs> so strong, so strong, so strong. There's someone here that you're very troubled over your child, very troubled over your child. Very, very troubled over your child. Your child is not a child like a child. It's, it's a son. But you are very troubled over him. God is bringing you help today. Amen. Help in that is settling your heart today. Amen. And is asking you to let him do what only him can do in the life of your child. You say he's your child, but he's also God's son. Yes. Huh? Yes. He belongs to God. You are just a custodian of the child. The child you call the child is no, no more a child. He's also accountable to God. So God says, stop worrying over him. Leave him to me. Leave him to me, says Spirit of Grace. Leave him to me. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I, I'm sharing with you for just a, a short while, a short time. And we have titled this, this message, ensuring tomorrow ensuring tomorrow Pastor Pella has always said something that there is no tomorrow anywhere stored up for anybody not tomorrow we say oh by tomorrow I will do this tomorrow because we have we have great plans for tomorrow there is no tomorrow anywhere what we call tomorrow is time working on our today to give us the tomorrow that we want to see. So tomorrow is not a future thing or a future time kept somewhere. They just wake up and say, oh, I'm not in tomorrow. No, your, to your tomorrow is your today seeds you plant. So you walk into tomorrow. You don't sleep and wait for tomorrow. You just grow. You develop. You mature. You increase. And before you know it, you are into your tomorrow. So your tomorrow is not a function of God. Your tomorrow does not depend on God. There's a God factor, yes. But it doesn't depend on God entirely. You and God have to work together to give you the tomorrow you want to see. Are you hearing me this morning? You must put your hands in God's hands to work out your tomorrow and enter into your tomorrow because God is not a magician. He's a God of principles. He will give you what you have sown, what you have planted. He's not unjust. He's fair. God is very just. What you plant today is what you see tomorrow. It's only a thief. Only a 419 that will go and reap what he has not sown. But God is not a God of 419s. Amen? Amen? So how do we ensure tomorrow? Is it by praying? By fasting? That's good. Is it by sowing seeds? That's good. How? What do we do? What do we do? Or what haven't we done? <laughs> it's all of the above. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We have stories in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible where we see men and women who had no business with having a great tomorrow. In fact, if you look at their present state, they were so bad. It was so bad that 
They would even imagine that they would have a good tomorrow. Is there anybody here like that? Nobody here like that. Oh, I used to think I was very ugly as a young lady. I was a stammerer. I had a bad temper. I didn't like anybody. I had a very poor self-image. So you can imagine what Grace worked on. So am, am I the only one here? Okay. Uh -uh. <laughs> I will tell you about Amadi, my brother. <laughs> As some secrets that I better let family secrets. <laughs> God. There was so much about you. So much. You know what you, 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 I mean, you didn't know you would drink from night in morning. Drink. Wake up in a stupor. Say, is it money or night? Oh. I thought it was money. Oh. Because of drink. But see you today. Pastor Harold. When you used to think of the girls, you go and toast. Have you, have you, see. I didn't say anything though. Did that, that say anything? No. If not for grace, <laughs> where would we be? That's a very interesting experience I had as a, a teenager. Then I just got born again, and um, there was this young man in my class. I think it was my third year. I'll preach to him, preach, preach, preach. He says, Sister Jane, leave that thing. Leave that thing. Ah, even me, I love God. I love, how do I speak the pigeon now? I love God so well. I love God so I, I can't. I can't speak the pigeon, don't worry. I love God so much that, you know, I mean, God sees my heart. He sees my heart. So he went, so we went on break on, on the, after second semester uh, exams. And then he went home. And then he came back um, for the first semester of the following year. And then he was talking with me. Sister Jane, how are you? Suddenly, you know, I don't know how God does those things. I don't know. Because God can use anybody. Suddenly, I just saw him in a flash. I saw him in his house. And I was telling his auntie or his, like his mother or his auntie that, ah, that girl, her name is Jane. I, I toasted her, I fell her, I dealt with her. In, the, in the, that flash I saw in my, in, my, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my mind. So I said, wait, 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 wait. You, you told your mother or your auntie, I described his house for him. I said, you are standing in front, there's this kiosk in front of the house. You were telling your mother, he said, wait, 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 you bewitch? I said, no. <laughs> I'm a child of God. How could you have talked about me? me what, what? Say, but I, I just wanted to just feel like uh, the guy got born again instantly. I like such things. See, we are not natural. Not because of the signs. No, 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 no. We are supernatural. If only you know who you are and what you carry, you'll not be afraid of the devil. You will not, let me say it again, you will not be afraid of the devil. And pray prayers like devil, don't see me. Devil, don't see me. Devil, I'm sleeping. Everything is devil. Devil, devil. Where are you? Do you know you have angels? No, do you know every believer has an angel assigned to him? Yes. No, do you know? Oh, you don't know. Sweetheart, you have an angel. Your personal co co customized angel. That is by you, following you. Except you are not a child of God. But if you are a child of God, born again, spirit filled, even not spirit filled, just born again yesterday today. There's an angel assigned to you to follow you, to, follow, to, to lead you wherever you are going. So we find stories in the Bible of people. Let me start with Rahab. We all know who Rahab was. She was a former prostitute. Even today, when we look at harlots, we are with so much disdain. Have you ever passed by that older, older John Road? I've been praying for the man that will be building build those buildings. Please join me in prayers, please. Join me, join me. For God to call up his spirit, his soul, his body, in case you know him, in case it's your brother, your cousin, please join us. Hmm? For God to change. How can a man have, have make a living from building brothels? What is that? What, 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 what kind of money is that? So I'll be praying for him more. That God one day, in fact, he's going to be so radical that he'll be worse than Paul. Your yeah. amen is too weak. What's yeah. happening? I said, amen. Yeah. amen. yeah. So, we find Rahab in the Bible. Rahab, the former prostitute. And for time's sake, I won't go 
Let me try. Joshua, the story is there. Write down Joshua 2 verses 9 to 11. She just heard about Jehovah. She hadn't even experienced Jehovah. She wasn't in the wilderness to see manna falling from the sky. She didn't see any of his miracles. She didn't walk through the Red Sea. She didn't see anything. But see what she told the spies? She told them, I have heard, we have heard of your God. Let me read it. Can we all read this? And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Next verse. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. Next verse. And as soon as we have heard those things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above, in earth beneath. Those words were words of faith. She didn't need to confess her sins. No. That was all God needed to see. A, a Canaanite prostitute, a non-Jew, who had no business with the covenant of Israel. She said, your God is only God in heaven, but also God in the earth beneath. And if you, read, if you go to Bible history, this lady, Rahab, married one of the spies that was sent to Canaan by name Salmon. Eventually, this Rahab was in the lineage of David. Did she ever think, when, when she was just declaring her faith, she didn't know. She had no idea. She, she, she didn't know where God was going to take her to. She had no idea. See, when you saw your sis today, when you do your little things, the thing you call little today, you have no idea where God is taking you to tomorrow. Because seed is not for today, it's for tomorrow. That's why we don't eat our seed. We don't curse our seed. We don't uproot our seed. We don't abort our seeds. We don't abuse our seeds. We water our seeds. What are our seeds? Sacrifice, patience, love, commitment, discipline, character, faith, courage, boldness, joy, peace. Those are our seeds. We water it. We water it. Because the, the seed speaks for us in the future. And secondly, also speaks for us for eternity. For eternity. Because eternity is bigger than today. Ha, ha, ha. Rehab. So many, so many. Who else now? Isaac. Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham's love son. Was so favored by God. And I kept wondering, how come Isaac kept striking water? Because water in the desert is like gold in Nigeria. It's like oil in Nigeria. Just imagine striking oil here in church. Man, all my dreams will come to pass. <laughs> all the orphanages, I want, to, I want to build orphanages. Oh yes, I want, to, I want to have orphanages. All my dreams will come to pass, everything. Just strike oil. Hey, Father, God will give you, give you the secrets of hidden wealth. More than oil. You will make wealth easily. Your amen is too quiet. What's that? The gospel needs money. And you are the one that will sponsor the gospel. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaac kept striking, just kept striking water. He struck the first one, I think it was Essek, which meant struggle or quarrel. And he came and said, it's our land. It's our land, leave the water, he left. He struck another, another, another one, Sitna, which meant strife. Leave it, leave it, leave it, it's our own, it's our own, it's our own. Saints did not, did not talk to them. Say, why is this man striking water? Why you, you are the owner of the land? How come you can't strike water? Why this stranger? A stranger that is coming from far to eat the good of your land. That is your portion. It's your portion in the name of... You will eat where people don't know you and you don't know people. In the name of Jesus. God will be your Godfather in that place in the name of Jesus. 
that you know God is enough. It's, it's, it's enough. It's enough. And then he struck the third one. He said, wow. They said, ah, let's leave him. All. This man is a, a water striker. Let's leave him. He's too much for us. And he called it Rehoboth. Plenty room. God has made plenty room. Uche, how are you? You are blessed. God will make plenty room for you. Plenty, I called you out for a purpose. God will bless you. So just calm down. Okay, you hear me? Take it easy and calm down. God will make plenty room for you. Rehoboth. You say, this is my, your own. Not, nobody else will take your place. And then, while they were still celebrating and thank, thank God for the third well, he said, and said, we have struck a fourth well, Sheba. And he said, oh, he called it the well of the oath, Beersheba. How come he didn't get bitter? See, it is your choice as a believer to either get bitter or get better. We may not like whatever happens to us, but we have a choice to allow what happens to us to define us. When you stay so much in the pain, you smell of the pain. You have to wash yourself with the word of God and come out clean. You were raped 10 years ago. So, so, yes, so sorry. Painful, yes. But what about now? You are washed. You are beautiful. You are married. You have your children. You have your husband. What a testimony. What a testimony. Your husband left you how many years ago? So what? Now you are doing so much better. You are stronger. You don't hate every man because your husband is not every man. He was just a man who messed up. That is his own story, but that's not your story. Or your wife. See, every one of us is responsible for our actions. God will hold us responsible for our responses. Our future will even hold us responsible for our choices. So we cannot, you cannot have my future because you don't know the seeds I'm sowing today. Yes. You, can, you, can, you can't claim my, my, my harvest because you have no idea what seeds I am planting today. What you see is this exterior. This exterior is not me. This is just one tenth of me. The real me is on the inside. The real me is in the secret. You are not there when I cry. You are not there when I give. You are not there when I pray. You are not there. This is not me. This is me. In there is me. So you have to find out your inner self. You want God digging it out together in your secret place. But what they see is this. That's what people see. Oh, she's all together. She doesn't have any problems. She's all anointed. Everything is only her. Uh -uh, She can sing, she can preach, she can. You have no idea. Find out God for yourself. Give God a shout. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. I don't know if I can preach this message today. I don't know. I'm just even at the introduction. Thank God for Pastor Pella. He's my inspiration. When he speaks, I, I I hear more than when he speaks. God bless him. What about Peter? The apostle Peter, whom Jesus called the rock. Can you imagine that? Ah, Peter, Bar Jonah. You are no more Simon, but you are Peter, the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But down the line, not, not too long, not a few months down the line, as they were eating the Passover, at about that time, Jesus said, Peter, <clears throat> Satan has desire to have you. But don't worry, my son, I have prayed for you. That your faith fail not. But I said, no, 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 Lord, you don't understand. <laughs> no, no, you don't know me, Lord. You, know. <laughs> you think you know me. You think. Not think. You think you know me. Lord Jesus, I will die. I will follow you. Wherever you are, I will follow Jesus. I said, mm, mm, mm. Don't worry. You deny me. Not once. Not twice. But three times before the cock crows once. You deny me three times. But don't worry. When you are converted, I checked the word of that, the, the, the meaning of that word in the Greek, converted. Let me just share, 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 share that with you quickly. 
It means, the Greek word for that is epistrepho. Don't worry, don't worry about it anyway. Meaning, around. To return. To come back again. So Christ was saying, so when you come back again to where you, from where you fell, when you are strengthened, strengthen your brethren. What kind of a God is this? That will tell you, confess, Henry, come, confess. Let me just use you as an example. Henry, um, just tell me you love me. As, as, Pastor Jane, as Pastor Jane. As Pastor Jane. As Pastor Jane. Pastor Jane, I love you. Okay, I love you too. What else? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know, Henry, honestly, I know you love me. But you know, a few hours from now, you are going to deny me three times. You ex express surprise now. Say me. I will never, I will never, express surprise. I will never deny you. You deny me. Not once, Henry. Not twice. But three times. But don't worry. <laughs> I'll pray for you. That when you are strengthened, you go and strengthen Papa Larry, Pastor Harold, and all these brethren. I trust in you. I believe in you. How will you feel? Let me go back to your seat. How will you feel? Somebody will tell you, you are going to fall. But don't worry. I have prayed for you. When you fall, I wish husbands would love their wives like this. Say, my wife, I, 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 I had a dream. You made a mistake. But don't worry. I prayed for you. When you are strong, you encourage me. What kind of a home would that be? I've never seen it. Where somebody will preempt you. You're wrong. I said, but don't worry. I know you make a mistake, but don't worry. I'm forgiving you ahead. Forgiveness ahead of time. Of the wrong. My brother, that's awesome, right? Yeah. Awesome. But do you know that's the way we ought to love our brethren? Forgive ahead of time. If husbands will forgive their wives ahead of time, we'll have less divorces. If wives... Wives, we forgive their husbands ahead of time. Say, oh, that's the way he is. Ah, ah. <laughs> Bring the money, he won't give me. Don't worry, God will provide. If we can be like that, we'll have less divorces in our homes. So Peter could have been so pained and bitter. Say, how could I? God, how, how could I? How could I have betrayed my Lord? My Lord. See, godly repentance, godly sorrow will lead you to repentance. But worldly repentance will lead you to death. That's why Judas had to kill himself. He was proud. Oh, I wish he had known that there was grace enough to cover him. He may, he may not have committed suicide. He was proud. Pride will tell you, how could I? A whole me, a whole pastor. I fell. I'm terrible. In fact, there's no need. In fact, I won't do anything again. I won't serve God again. You are proud. You are proud. When you say, Lord, God, how could I? I'm sorry. Lord, I, I depend on you. I trust in you. Then you are humble. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter accepted forgiveness, repented, and he recovered and became the pillar, the first pastor of the church. So rather than being bitter, I became better. How many, there are so many examples, but just, just, just these three. I'm about to start my message and I just have 90 more minutes. Oh my goodness. Is this time correct? It is well. Wow. So, time is so interesting. The, 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 the theme of the message is ensuring tomorrow. Time is so interesting because time, I have imagined, what if God did not give us time? What if time was just a one mass? That means some, somebody can have a have an headache. Just have a headache forever. Or, once somebody makes a mistake, the mistake stays on forever. It would have been terrible. But God gave us time for a reason. So we can look back and make changes. And make adjustments where we need to. And where the effect of our new change, we erase the effect of what we did yesterday. That's the idea of time. That's the reason for time. Hallelujah. So time reveals what is hidden. Like a woman that is pregnant. I mean, she first... Notice that she has, she has missed her period. Nobody knows she's pregnant, but just give her nine months. There will be a child. Amen? Or a seed that is planted. Time reveals the seed. If it's a good seed, or if it's a bad seed, 
if it's corn, corn seed, if it's wheat, or if it's tares, or if it's weed. Hallelujah. But there's also one thing that time also does in our lives. Wow. I just touched the message and, I, and I'm just going to sit down because I've never started. Time, are you ready? Yes. Time gives us the opportunity to make the right choices. Let me write that down, please, in bold capital letters. Time gives us the opportunity to make the right choices. So you don't wait for tomorrow. You don't sit down and wait for tomorrow. It's like, I'm waiting for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll do this. You start in time to do the things you want to see in your tomorrow. Because hope is not passive. Hope is not being lazy. Hope is not a mental wishing, just wishing mentally. No. Hope is very active. Actually, hope is the other side of faith. And faith is active. Faith is not passive. Faith is a very active verb. Very, 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 very active. If you have faith, you will do. If you have faith, you will speak. If you have faith, you will express. If you have faith, you will do what you are saying. Faith without works is dead. Amen. So, time gives us the opportunity to change what should be changed. To add on what should be added on. To improve, to become better. To mature. I don't even know what that is to even add this. Yeah, I can add it. Today's Christian is very lazy. We have services where we blame everybody. Where we absorb ourselves of blame and look for who to blame. We seek for seers or false prophets who will tell you, oh, this person is the cause of your problem. When you know that that person is the cause of your problem, what will it do to you? How will it help you? What do you want? To know who has a hand in your problem or who will give you the solution. Decide what you want. I've seen people who said, Pastor, they said this witch. There's a witch man. Even, yeah, I've, uh, somebody told me, I'm a, I'm a witch. I told her, I said, why did you kill your father? I mean, it was so obvious. I said, eh, eh. I, was, I was asking for money. He didn't give me. I said, eh. A young girl. Anyway, she's dead now because she refused to repent. Amen. Anyway, you, you, you didn't hear anything. Don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry about that. that. See, that's just the way it is. If you're unrepentant in your evil ways, and if you accept the forgiveness of Christ, the end is very easy. It's very clear. No need to pray. No, 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 no need to pray for you and say, "Hey, fire only goes fire." No need for that. There's no. That. You will be fighting God, and who who, who can win uh, uh, God? Where we, where was I? God remind me. Taking feet. Where was I? Only goes remind me. What was I saying? Eh? Huh? Sorry. Time. Oh, taking feet distracted me there. He's the one. That's right. Was it time? Oh, that's, yeah. Thank you, Dickie. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Shake my hand now, Dickie, please. <laughs> so, you have, you find posters. Uncle, what have I done to you? I've seen that. Oh, God. Where is my umbilical cord? I've seen that. Have you not seen it? Ah. You may even be here and you have gone for such programs. Brother, leave me alone. <laughs> Untie me and let me go. We blame everybody. We blame everybody. Say, no, I'm innocent. Oh. I just love God, but that uncle. And I've seen where the people that they said we were doing them died. The people died eventually, but they were still in the mess. So what happened now? The so-called uncle or auntie that was doing you, not you, doing that person, died and then you are still on the ground. So what happened? That should tell you that every one of us is responsible for where, for where we are. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. We all have access to the Word of God. We are all responsible for where we are. And we have a responsibility to ourselves and to God to get up from where we are and stand out. So don't go around blaming anybody. Oh, that's old trick. Old story. Old story. Old story. Adam, your father, your great forefather, former forefather. No, Christ is your forefather. Yeah. Your former forefather did this. Say, ah, uh, is the wife? Ah, uh, God. Ah, uh, Pastor Arad, borrow me some Yoruba. 
Yoruba. Say ah, I can't speak Yoruba. I don't know. Kilo, no kilo. Um, like to say, um, it's the woman you gave me. Iya watofu mini. It's the woman you gave me. Guys, it is you. Can you imagine? Play me, God. Iya watofu mini. It is the wife you gave me. It's not me. You don't ask me for a wife. I was here quietly counting the animals. I was playing with lion. I was playing with, with giraffe. You gave me a wife. God, I didn't ask you, Abby. Instantly, turn, turn the blame to God. Adam, I'll get to heaven. I'll, <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> there are people that I want to see in heaven. First of all, Adam. Then Apostle Paul. Then my father. <laughs> Sorry, don't mind me. I've just been there. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So, let me go to the scripture. That's Galatians 6, 7 to 8. Let's read it quickly. Wow. We'll read it in uh, King James. Then we'll read it also in the message translation. King James, Galatians 6, 7 to 8, please. Creative media. Thank you. Do not, be not, what? God is not... For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Give me message translation. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plans, he will what? The person who plans selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God. He equates Ignoring the needs of others to ignoring God. So it's easy for you to come to church early, iron your dress, do everything, but people around you can't invite them to church. Ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God. I've heard, I've heard of some churches where they're going to church, you don't talk to anybody, you don't greet, you know, you know how to go to church. The Bible is here. It's war today. God must meet my need today. And the way they are coming out is even worse. When they are coming out, it is war. I won't, I'm, I'm not calling any names. By the way, I'm not talking down on, on any church. I'm just, I'm just letting you see some foolishness. When you ignore the needs of others, you are ignoring God. Kindness is one of the hallmarks of Christianity. Kindness. If you come to church, that you want to sit in front, maybe you are not a leader, you are, you are not a deacon, and then you, you see a Bible on a chair, but because you like that chair, just fling the Bible, just fling it. What is that? Little, little things. Not big things, though. Small, 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 small things. Ignoring the needs of others. It says you are ignoring God. Hallelujah. Those are seeds. You want to have a better tomorrow? Sow the right seeds today. Sow the right seeds today. Let's read um, Luke 6, 31. We'll read 31 to 35. We'll read it in King James Version, please. Can we all read this? As you would like, no, 31, thank you. As you, would that, as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them. People just stop here. They just read and say, okay, I want, <laughs> okay. They target somebody, but they're mostly, you know, it's very tall. Mm -hmm. How are you, sir? God bless you, sir. Yes, sir. Well done, sir. Because they're thinking of tomorrow. They're going to ask for something tomorrow. That's not what he's saying. As you would like, as you would that men should do to you, do you also to others. If you just read this, you won't get the, the, the full meaning of what Christ was saying here. Next verse, 32. Uh -huh. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those. Have you seen arm robbers in love? Arm robbers. Very much in love. Good fathers. Good husbands, but they're arm robbers. So, does it mean that they are doing the right thing? No. 
It's only natural for people to love those who love them. That's normal. You haven't done anything extra if you like those who like you. Choir. You haven't done anything natural if you talk nice to those who talk nice to you. Because in the choir, we have all sorts of people. We are blessed with all kinds. People that aggravate the joy of God in you, that aggravate the, the anger of something in you. We, have all, we are blessed. And that's for a reason, to make you better as a believer. It's everywhere. We are everywhere. Even uh, among the ushers. Everywhere. Wherever, wherever you have people, you have people that will get on your nerves. It is normal. If you, want to, if, if, you, if you want to have your own, some people want to be loved the way they want to be loved. You are, you are, you are a hermit. You are not normal. The, the, if you are a husband and you tell your wife, this is the way I want to be, this, this is the way you must love me, this is the way you must, you don't know what love is because love is giving. Love is not taking. Let people relate with you the way they want to so you can know them for who they are. Because people can pretend to be what, you, what they think you want them to be. They can act it. It's very easy to pretend. But let people be free around you. So if there are mistakes, you can help them out. Or even if there are mistakes in your life, they can help you. I love it when my children correct me. I love it. Children, both physical and spiritual, when they say, Pastor Jay, no, I, I love it. I'm honored. I say, at first, I said, like, what, what, what do you mean? Don't, don't, not Pastor Jay. After, I was like, okay, 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 okay. Do you get? Amen? Are you learning something this morning? So, next verse. Where did we stop? Verse 32? 33, please. 33. And if you do good to them, which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do this, even the same. 34. And if you lend... For reading like you're not seeing. Uh, uh, creative media, wait, wait, now, nah, hey, wait. What you talking they, they, they are not seeing it clearly. I don't know what's happening. Please, can you read it clearly for me? <laughs> do you see what he's saying? He says, if you lend, and what do you lend? Anything. Shoe, sometimes. You know, when we were young, <laughs> those days. My, my, my twin sister, if I lend her my shoe, <laughs> because I, I'm eyeing her, her new shoe that, 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 that she just bought. Ha, huh, sisters. You know, men don't have any issues with such things. In fact, they don't even lend, they just wear. Brothers. In the same house. It's just, in fact, you, you dress, you say, ah, bros. Then I say, sorry, I just wear them. No issues. <laughs> but women, we are blessed. <laughs> You took my slippers, it would be a major quarrel issue. You took my, without, not even without, you took, you wore my bathroom slippers from here to the bathroom. Why? It's a major issue. You use my hair cream. Why? It's a major issue. Then use my cream. Ah, that is on the unpardonable sin. <laughs> I know I'm being funny, but see, let's change. Let's make adjustments. If you lend to those who can pay you back? Or who can lend to you? It says you've done nothing special. Wow. If you lend money to those that can pay you back, you've done nothing special. So what if you become a fighter? Somebody, you, you gave money to somebody and the, and, the, and the person is not paying back. You start fighting. You have become, I don't even know what to call you, iniquitous. By the time you are lending money out to a believer, have it in your mind that you will not ask back. That's what you, it's not me, it's Jesus. See? It's, I didn't say so, it's Jesus. So if you know you cannot handle it, don't lend. Are you hearing? Don't just lend. Don't lend. Don't lend until God has worked on that area of your life. Until you are karma in the area of money. Amen? Until you are, you are ready to lose money. Don't lend. Don't lend. May God help you to lend and forget how much you lent in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Say, Pastor, you know how much she's owing me? I'll say, how much? Pastor, 5,000 naira, 5,000 naira. 5,000 naira. Pastor, since, for six months. 
This is, a, this is a, a, an actual thing. Somebody told me that last year. First, I said, five, five cases. And you're angry? I said, my friend, leave my office. Leave here. <laughs> I drove away. Leave, leave, leave here. Don't talk to me. Five, five K, you're coming to the bottom of me. Leave my office. Get away. You shout away. Get away. Everything. I way away. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Next verse, verse 34. 35, sorry. But love ye your enemies. Wow, two more. And lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. This is hard truth. Hard truth. In your mind, you are saying, is it, Pastor Jane, is it possible? Pastor, do, 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 do you even do it? I do it. I, pra I practice it. Do good to your enemies. Be kind though, to those who are unthankful. Say, I gave her a dress. She had not even said thank you. She just wore it. She didn't even say thank you. It's okay. Thank yourself. Say, I, I thank you for giving that girl this dress. I, I thank you. Thank yourself. Let that be enough for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So tomorrow is not what is not stood up there for you somewhere. It's what you do today. Your little, little things, your little seeds you sow today will lead you into your beautiful tomorrow will lead you into the future that God has designed for you to have. And they will give you a lovely eternity. There are things I am doing today that I know that is not for today. It's for my eternity. Oh, yes. I'm expecting that when I enter into heaven, oh, 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 I'll see people, I'll say, Pastor Jane, oh, Pastor Jane. Oh, not Pastor Jane. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think we have any titles in heaven. Sister Jane, Sister Jane, Sister Jane is okay. Sister Jane, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I had a vision one time of heaven. I, I said this with, with all humility. Whew. I have never seen a place where there were children like that. There were so many children. I mean young children. Between the ages of two and five. True. And they were singing. I wrote the song down. One day, I'll sing, I'll sing songs for you. And they were singing. Singing. I was like, hey, Father, I was, where, where would I even? I walked to a place. I saw a beautiful fruit. It was green, very beautiful. I, I don't know. I've never seen that, seen that kind of fruit here on earth. And I just held the fruit. fruit. And it clung to my hand. I said, ah, ah. Then a woman that looked like Chinese, she spoke a language that I don't know. I didn't understand, but I could respond to her in my language. She said, oh, she said, are you surprised? I said, yes, I'm surprised. In her language, she said, it happens a lot around here. You don't struggle for things here. She said, they just, the fruit clung, to, the leaves were just clung to my hand. I said, oh my goodness. Then the roads, oh God. What struck me the most was the road. And there were buildings, buildings, buildings. There were buildings. The only thing I can describe it was it was sophisticated. There were buildings. Like here, like we have on earth. But sophisticated buildings. The roads. The roads. The roads were awesome. They were awesome. Awesome. Anyway, that's just on the side. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Please hang in there. Don't give up. Don't sell your birthright. <laughs> if you have made mistakes, be humble enough to say, Lord, I'm sorry. And meet somebody that you respect and say, I fell, I did this. And God will forgive you. If I, before you call him, he comes in and he wraps you up in his arms of mercy. Can you stand on your feet, please? Stand up on your feet. Hmm. you've heard the word of God this morning I pray that God has touched you in the areas that only you know areas in which only you know that you have to make changes because God never judges God never condemns but he always brings his word to you to show you where you should make the necessary adjustments. And he will stand by you, encouraging you to say, don't worry, my, my, my child, change this, change that, do this, 
do that. Can you lift your hand and say, Lord, today, I promise to sow the right seeds. I promise to do the right things that will give me a better tomorrow. And that will give me a place with you in eternity. I'm sorry if I've done anything. Are your hands up? I want everybody, everybody's hands up, please. I'm sorry if I've displeased you in any of my actions. I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me with your precious blood. Thank you for believing in me. I believe in you. I believe that you are who you say you are. And you can do in my life what you say you can do. I refuse to doubt you any longer. I refuse to ask you questions anymore. I ask that your will be done in my life. Thank you for hearing this simple prayer of mine. In the name of Jesus. Amen.